What's up? This is Iron and So back today with another very important message. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment, share this video, let me know what you think about my content. I want to talk about today a very important message, and that is the whole conversation concerning creation. The creation of the universe, the earth, the moon, the stars, everything that we see each day with our eyes. I want to talk about that and, and just give some insight into how this all came about. And this is based on a course I took in college years ago concerning creation and science from a biblical perspective. So I want to talk about that. And I think with so much going on in the earth right now, with all this happening with the increase in violence, the increase in sexual sins, which were two things that happened right before the flood of Noah. If you go back to the history before the flood of Noah, there was an increase in violence and an increase in sexual sins. We see that people are really just day by day turning on each other. And there's an increase in anger and rage and wrath. And just the hearts of men are going cold more and more day by day. And you look at the news and you wonder, okay, is there a God? And if there is a God, why does he allow these things to happen? So in the midst of all that we see every day, I think it's important to sometimes go back to the very beginning. And so that's what I plan to do on this talk today. To go back to the very beginning and talk about creation. When we think about science, we think about the repeatability, predictability, and observation. We have a lot of scientific evidence that points back to the Bible and its creator, as mentioned in Romans 1, verse 20. To begin with, you have a literal six-day creation account that is recorded in Genesis chapter 1, the very first chapter of the Word of God. The Word of God starts off with this story. The creation of earth, space, time, light, atmosphere, dry land, plant life, the sun, the moon, the stars, flying creatures, the sea, land animals, man, and then woman. The book of Job, for example, mentions two creatures we believe to be dinosaurs. They ate grass like ox, had strong belly muscles, and tails were strong like cedar trees, and bones like bronze, according to Job 40 and 41. There are tons and tons of dinosaur bones found today even in Colorado. The significance of this is that the clam fossils were found right next to dinosaurs. This points again to a worldwide flood account. There are fossils that look like shrimp, birds, and other animals. A close study of the T-Rex shows that their short arms and teeth didn't go far enough into their gums seems to indicate that they were not meat eaters. The DNA of a man points to intelligent design, as opposed to evolution. In DNA, letters are put together in sequence with information in each of our cells. There are around 3.2 billion letters in each human being. We are indeed, according to Psalms, fearfully and wonderfully made. So a, a literal six-day creation, Noah's flood, evidence of dinosaurs, and the biblical accounts are all proven facts. A six-day creation... Noah's flood, evidence of dinosaurs, and the biblical account of the flood all points back to the Word of God. The questions of who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? can be answered with verses from the Word of God. And these are three questions we all have had. Who am I really? What is my true purpose? Why am I here on this earth? And where will I go once this life on earth ends? We were created by God, according to Genesis 1, 26 to 27. And I think it's so important in these last days to go back to that very foundational teaching. We did not come about by accident. We are not just these random individuals on the earth. We were created by the Almighty God, the Most High. We are here to obey Him, according to King Solomon's book in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13 to 14. And I believe that those who believe in the Messiah, Yeshua, will one day spend their eternity in heaven, according to John 14. To believe that there was a Big Bang Theory 20 million years ago, cooled into a ball. This is what they believe. There was a Big Bang 20 million years ago. It cooled into a ball 4.5 billion, billion years ago. And now we have an earth. That's very hard for me to believe. Yet many people consider the Big Bang Theory view to be a fact there are those who have a false view of what creation is 
creation is not, and I want to put this out here, a, a biblical belief in creation or the um, creation of heaven and earth and the universe by God, it isn't. Christian science, religion versus science or any other false presupposition. Creation is much more than this. We have evidence of the earth being relatively young. I do believe in a relatively young earth. I don't believe the earth is 100 million years old. I don't believe that. There are certain facts that point to the belief or, or that can authenticate the belief in a young earth. Evidence such as dust on the moon, comets, the earth's magnetic field, and helium in the earth's atmosphere. Life suddenly appearing and reproducing after its own kind. The evidence for a global flood and the like is what creationists believe. In the words of Ian Juby, Ian Juby was a creationist, someone who I had a chance to listen to lectures several in my days of college. And so he is an expert, Ian Juby, I-A-N-J-U-B-Y. He's an expert in his study of creation science. He says that every belief system has a price. A price if you're right and a price if you're wrong. On one hand, you have the evolutionists who believe it took hundreds of millions of years for the world, man, and life to be. While creationists believe that the earth is no older than six to 10,000 years at the very most. We have to ask ourselves again, what is science, right? What is science? Science is testable, observable, repeatable, and predictable. That being the case, the biblical account and study of creationists, creation rather, is accurate because science is testable, observable, repeatable, and also predictable. The scripture warns that in 2 Peter 3, verse 3 and verse 5, that there will be scoffers in the last days. And, and this refers to, and I've seen a lot of this myself just being online, this tendency to really just mock knowledge, to mock truth, to make a mockery of holiness. When you begin to talk about living a life of righteousness and overcoming the PMO cycle, for example, making a decision to be celibate for a season, uh, making a decision to get married and to stay with one woman. When you begin to talk like this and talk about celibacy and, and, and being pure while single and then having a covenant and honor of marriage once you're married to one woman, a lot of people scoff at this biblical teaching. And so in these last times, the Bible prophesied that there will be men all over the earth who have all the answers, who despise truth, who despise God, and who despise anyone who talks about them. Charles Darwin, for example, in his book, The Origins of the Species, he was one who really tried his best to explain away the biblical account of creation. We now understand that the old earth concept was introduced for only one reason. This is to explain away the biblical account of the flood. So a lot of these quote unquote scientists created this old earth concept or teaching, philosophy, whatever you want to call it, with the very purpose of removing away the biblical account of the flood. Why is that? Because there are so many, uh, or, or rather so much evidence throughout the earth that points by, back to a worldwide flood that happened in the days of Noah. For example, the evidence of trees being buried upside down. Death poses of animals. So in other words, they had these fossils and these uh, animals that were caught in these death poses that like died on the spot from all the water in the formation of the Grand Canyon. There are several logical reasons for the belief in a flood. The whole earth was covered by water, every mountain by at least 15 cubits. Billions of dead fish, birds and animals point to Noah's flood. There are even fossils of clams found on Mount Everest. What does that tell you? Right, there are clams that were found, fossils rather, of clams that are found on Mount Everest. There are some who say it takes 1,000 years for layers to form in mountains. We know now that one way can be formed up to five layers. One way can form up to five layers. The death poles of many creatures are fossilized. Animals with their mouths trapped open, heads are back as far as possible, and others that appear to be swim in a swimming position. This all points back to what? The flood of Noah. Noah's flood was an event our world bears the marks of even to this day in 2022. Niagara Falls. We talk about the earth, creation, the, the universe, right? Niagara Falls has a 150 feet fall 
and speed, it gets up to the 60 miles per hour. So 150 feet fall and speed gets up to 60 miles per hour. People who have viewed this site state you can hear the power of the Russian water. You may say, what's the big deal about this? We have rocks with percussion marks on them. The rocks had to be moving at 60 to 75 miles per hour to receive such marks. The rocks were picked up and thrown as they were pushed at a force of 10 to 15 miles faster than the Niagara Falls. Another truth that points to Noah's flood. We can measure the land folding, buckling, and fracturing even today. Erosion of riverbeds, channels, and rivers even going through straight mountains. We know much about the creation now that was once unknown. For example, the Red Wall Limestone, one of the most prominent cliffs in the Grand Canyon, is only 500 feet thick. Soil can form in 10 years or less as well. This information refutes the theory that it takes millions of years for layers to form in mountain areas. Tree rings grow into two stages, the early wood in the spring and the late wood in preparation for winter. This is some very interesting evidence against, I'm sorry, there are there is some very interesting evidence against Noah's flood in the Arctic area. There was a growth difference that would have taken five years that happens only in one season. Some believe the trees were floated there during the flood of Noah. There are some people who believe the Grand Canyon is millions of years old. This simply doesn't make sense when viewed scientifically. If this was true, there would be accumulated dirt of about 3.5 miles high on the surface of the canyon. Where did all the dirt go? Nowhere, because the dating of the canyon at this age is totally off. There was a channelizing erosion during the flood as well. This happened when water gaps went straight through the mountains instead of around. Another false theory exposes that man and dinosaurs didn't live at the same time. Evolutionists teach that dinosaurs were extinct 60 million years before man evolved. There are tracks today with the footprint of a young woman and dinosaur. This, th these can be found in some of these creation uh, museums you have throughout the earth. There are various um, cities within America that have creation science museums and they have these type of tracks you can view for yourself. This means that there is at some point mankind lived with the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs laid their eggs in pairs and in a circular rotation that was rare. There were some found with the embryos still inside others, while others appeared to be on a run while laying the eggs, which of course points right back to the flood of Noah, which means the creatures were on the run as the world was being covered with water pressure. As we continue this study of the complete creation, the question arises, what did the Messiah, Yeshua, believe? Yeshua believed in Jonah's story according to Matthew 1240. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He also believed in Noah's flood, just as it was written in the, in the Old Testament. He believed that Adam and Eve were created by Almighty God, and not just some myth or fable passed on by tradition of men. The above scripture passages proves that Jesus believed in the creation of Adam and Eve. Okay, so what did Jesus believe? He believed in the creation of Adam and Eve. He believed in Jonah's story. He believed in a worldwide flood. He was present at all of the above because Jesus is God according to John 1 and verse 1. And all things were created or made by him according to Colossians 1 and verse 16. There are some who believe in a gap theory. What is that? That is that the six days were actually 6,000 years. The Bible makes it clear that it was a literal six days. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. There is a connection between Christ and the Ark of Noah. The Ark and Christ were, think about this, this is interesting. So you think about the Ark of Noah and Jesus Christ. Both of them were provisions of God from death and destruction, right? They were both sacrifices, took unique beatings. People scoffed at both messages, many rooms, but only one door. I, I don't know about you guys. I thought that, that was pretty profound from this lecture. So you think about the Ark of Noah and the connection between Jesus Christ. Uh, provision from death and destruction, sacrifices. It, they both took on unique beatings. Imagine the beating the Ark took on throughout that time, as well as Jesus on the cross. And people um, back then, even today, both scoff at both messages. And it's interesting that there are many rooms, but only one door. 
the ark landed on the 17th day of Nisan, which is the same day Christ rose from the dead. That is very interesting. So the ark landed on the 17th day of Nisan, which is the same day that Christ rose from the dead. Next, we will briefly look at the carbon-14 dating. Within 100,000 years of all carbon should be completely gone and death stops the intake of carbon-14. Coal, gold, and diamonds are supposed to be millions of years old, right? This is what they teach. If this was true, why is there coal and diamonds with carbon-14 in them, right? Think about that. If within 100,000 years of all carbon was completely gone, and death stops the intake of carbon-14, how is it that gold and diamond, all these precious jewels are made over the course of millions of years? That would not be, that cannot be scientifically true. This is true why there is coal and diamonds with carbon-14 in them, if that's true. This theory contradicts itself and doesn't prove things evolved over millions of years. Let's talk about a little bit now, ancient man. Ancient man was much more intelligent in those days than we think. The pyramids that are built over the world have heating and cooling systems that still work to this day. According to scriptures, all cultures came from Babylon. So from a biblical perspective, all cultures came from Babylon. And I plan to do a teaching on Babylon and how I believe, in many cases, America is becoming like this pagan country and, and like basically modern day Babylon. So that being said, According to scriptures, all cultures came from Babylon. The Tower of Babel was actually a pyramid. Another example of the intelligence of man in those ancient days is the battery. The four metals refined in a clay vessel was an effective tool used in Egypt. The stones for the pyramids weighed thousands of tons, yet they were able to move this massive weight. How did they do it? It is said that they simply used drums and trumpets. This doesn't make sense, but apparently they knew something we didn't know. They knew something about sound and vibrations that we didn't know. Man has so many wonderful discoveries. For example, the Zulu um, Japanese fisherman caught this massive sea creature with some believed to be a dinosaur. The flippers were narrow at the body, all four the same size and had red flesh unlike that of sharks. The sharks float on water when dead. This creature was found 900 feet under the water. A man by the name of Dale Fuller at work one day was using a bulldozer um, ended up digging up the bones. He suspected the bones to be those of the Indians. Come to find out they were the bones of 10 skeletons, right? Women, men, and children. This sandstone was supposedly millions of years old, but we know that this isn't true. You also have the Taylor Trail. This is a 14-track sequence with sometimes... Um, the prints of dinosaur footprints. What happens is the dinosaurs left their prints and the humans just walked in the already made trail. <laughs> it's that, that simple. Which contradicts the theory that dinosaurs died millions of years before humans. When we look at dogs, we get a great example of the variations within one species. You have Great Danes, pit bulls, bulldogs, and boxers, but they are all dogs. Ten times in the first chapter of Genesis, it records creatures reproducing after their own kind. Nothing has changed. Shrimp, plants, and fish are the same as the images found in the fossils. However, creatures were much larger in those days. For example, you had six foot tall beavers, 12 foot tall moose, cattails 60 feet long. And we know from the Bible there were giants in the land at, at some point. In short, this was like a dream world before the flood. Men could run over 200 miles without getting tired. Wounds could be healed in 45 minutes. And people lived up to 900 years, such as Adam. There's also more evidence besides the fossil record that point to men living with dinosaurs. In the Inca culture, there is found written on stones what depicts a man playing with two small dinosaurs as pets. Lots of stories of people who believe they saw dinosaurs like creatures. A unique long neck creature in Africa. Flying creatures seen by many in Alaska and a number of missionary stories who had strange encounters with giant creatures. This is evidence that demands a verdict. It has been said that time is the enemy of evolution. And not only can't solve its problem, but it causes fatal problems. Evolution is neither scientific nor genetics. The law of biogenesis says that life begets life. Let's look at the complexity of a single protein. 
proteins are made up of amino acids. If you look at, for example, at Legos, there are 20 different ones to choose from within 400 combinations. It takes 30,000 proteins to make up the till of one of these fish. The largest protein to date is 26,926 amino acids. Proteins are made by ribosomes, which themselves are made up of proteins. This information is also called codependent. This goes along with the intelligent design view. We all go through genetic changes or mutations. There are over 3,500 genetic disorders in the humans. Not one is increased in information. We accumulate genetic errors from our parents and even collect them from our lifetime. We pass them down to our children and this process continues. With this view that God created all things, let's look at the hearts of frogs, fish, and crocodiles. The fish has two chambers in its hearts, right? Can pump high pressure blood straight to their gills because they live underwater. The frog mixes blood and breath through the lungs and in the skin. The crocodile has a four chamber heart, two valves like teeth, which allows it to be underwater for up to two hours at a time. Th these are just a few examples of the, the, the genius of God and the creation of the animal kingdom. So we think about all this, guys. You think about just the earth itself and the animal kingdom and the trees and the stars and the moon and all that God has made, the complexity of the various animals, you know, just even having this conversation about a frog and a fish's heart and how God made them. It's just incredible. And before the flood, people lived in what seemed to be, again, a wonder world. The scripture speaks of something solid in the air known as a ferment. And I wanted, I was looking forward to getting to this part of this, this lecture. By the way, for you guys who listen to this, um, this was a paper I wrote while doing my undergraduate study in theology. And it is a complete creation paper that I wrote in 2008, if you must know the year. So this is a paper from 2008. And just reading this with you guys, I wanted to give you some information. Of course, you're going to have to do your own research. This is a 10 or 15 page paper, but it's going to require several hours to go deeper into this for your own study. So the purpose of this is to give you a solid creation talk on my platform, because I do believe in that. Um, as someone who has consistently presented um, my teachings from a biblical perspective, I think it's important to sometimes go back to the very beginning and to express that I truly do believe in the creation of the heavens and earth and everything we see happen because of the power of Almighty God. If I did not believe that, I'm going to be honest, I would not believe the Bible. If I did not believe the first chapter, what we're talking about right now, if I did not believe the first chapter or the first several chapters, Noah's flood, you know, creation of Adam and Eve, the um, animals and the world, the water. If I didn't believe in that, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, I would not believe in the Bible. I'm just going to keep it to you just like that. But since I do believe in this, then I really have no problem or trouble believing in the rest of the word of God. So that, that being said, there was something that was referred to, this is very interesting, guys, as the ferment. This is found in Genesis 1, 6 to 8. The ferment is, is, is seen in Genesis 1, 6 to 8, and this speaks of something solid in the air. Humans could run at this time up to 200 miles without fatigue. So in other words, it was a different different atmosphere. There was the, the the air was fresher. It was a more perfect earth. This is before the fall of man, before the curse, and all those things happened. So you had people running two hundred miles without fatigue. You don't think about this. People could get healed from a wound in up to forty five minutes. Animals were a lot larger. This is why people were able to live over nine hundred years. If you go back to Genesis, people were living what four hundred years, five hundred years, six hundred years, nine hundred years. But unfortunately, because of the sins of men, the world after the flood was a different place. And it even points back to our world now. It's so sad to think about people living that long. And now we have people, you know, especially in our ghettos, dying at 16. Think about that. You know, let me switch gears for a second. Ellie Capone died at 17 in Chicago. King Von Duck in their 20s. So you got all these young men all over this country, men in the military, you know, our, our veterans, you know. Marines and Air Force and Army. You got all these young men all over this earth just dying at such a young age. It's really sad when you really think about it on a deeper level. It's really sad. And and we see this as the result of all the curses and death and destruction that is in our modern earth. God limits man's confusion. God limits man's confusion, right? In other words, God limited man's life, confused their languages, 
and the natural disasters that took the lives of thousands of people, right? So God stepped in and created some confusion and began to limit the amount of time that man could be on the earth. So I hope you enjoyed this teaching. Uh, a lot of thought went into this, a lot of study and research. This was taken over the course of like a week or two, several lectures. I took a lot of notes and probably took like 23 pages of notes throughout those teachings for that week or two. I have a book um, that I don't know the name of right now. I have to look it up to see if I still have it in my library now. I may not even have it. This was back from 2008. Um, but this is based on a book I read years ago about creation science, of course. Um, and I think this is important because people like to make people like me and others sound like idiots who believe in a biblical creation account. Like we're just these dummies that don't know about science or or the um, intelligent design of the earth, of mankind, everything else. And so I think it's important to really have a pretty solid uh, explanation of this. I'm not saying we have to be a creation expert like Ian Juby. Of course, I'm not a creation expert, but I know enough about it to give an intelligent response to those who ask me why I believe in the creation of heavens and earth. So I think it's good for that. And it's also good to keep in mind that we do have a creator watching over us. I you know, guys, you know me, let me give my, let me be honest so now, let me be the prophet now. Let me step out of creation and step to my prophet's office. You know, guys, there's so much bad stuff happening in the world right now. I'm be honest. You know, some bad times are coming. You know, I, mean, I, hate to, I hate to even say that. Some some scary times are coming, dangerous times. But we, we have to remind ourselves, guys, that there is a God in heaven, right? There is a God that no matter how bad things get, that watches over us, that protects us, and has a plan for our lives. And so I want to give you this message today. This is your brother, Iron and Soul. Take care. God bless. Peace.